Hello, I'm Lynn Langett. This is to introduce this open source course called Learn WDL. So what is WDL? As it says here, it stands for Workflow Description Language. It's a scripting language, it's open source, which allows you to specify data processing workflows with a human readable and writable syntax. WDL was originally developed for genomic workflows at the Broad Institute but has subsequently been, become part of an open source community and is being used for genomics and it can be used in other domains. So this course is going to provide you with a number of examples of working with WDL scripts. And as is typical, we're going to start with a hello world. So you can see in 15 lines of code here in the first hello world example, we have the key parts of the WDL scripting language. In lines 3 through 5, we have the workflow definition, which is just hello world, and it simply calls the one defined task, which is write greeting. In lines 7 through 15, we have the write greeting task, which consists of a single command defined in lines 8 through 10, echoing hello, and it is going to be output as a file with the variable name output greeting to standard out, and that's defined in lines 11 through 14. Now, WDL's execution environments are flexible, and we're going to actually look at that and then we'll run it on a couple of different execution environments just so you can get an idea of how you might want to work with your WDL scripts. So, WDL, as I've said, is the script that describes the workflow. WDL scripts are executed on a service called Cromwell. Cromwell is a Java service that acts as a job scheduler. And importantly, it can be configured to work with a number of different backend services or compute environments. To get us started, we're going to think about Cromwell in run mode. And this is designed mostly for prototyping. Cromwell in run mode can run a single workflow or WDL script. And typically when you work with this, you're going to use one of two ways. And we'll see uh, one of them coming up here. Now when you move to production level analysis, you're more typically going to work with Cromwell in server mode. So you'll have a persistent client, usually a virtual machine on the cloud, but it doesn't have to be, uh, that will act as a job scheduler so that you can run multiple workflows. So in run mode, when you're testing, you can set up Cromwell on your local machine. But what I like to do is I like to use a cloud VM. So I'm going to show you what that looks like next. What I've done is I've set up a GCE VM instance with all the required dependencies so that I can run WDL script with Cromwell. And then I've connected to it with SSH. Now in the repository, I'll list a recipe so that you could set up a dev machine easily, just as I've done. So I've connected to the machine, and I'm going to make this a bit bigger so you can see it. And in this particular machine, I uh, included a README so that I could quickly just get up and running. Notice I have a directory called Cromwell that I've created. And I've put the instructions here, which I'll also put inside of the repo. And you can see that Cromwell, as I mentioned, is a Java jar file, so it requires the Java SDK to run. And uh, uh, there is another uh, tool called the WOM tool that you'll often want to use as well. It's a linter as well as it provides some other developmental capabilities. And then um, what I've done is I've downloaded both of those jar files and put them on this image and I've created an example workflow. So I'm now going to navigate to my Cromwell directory and I'll show you that I have as of this recording the Cromwell 50 jar file and the WOM tool 50 jar file. Now I have two WDL files and the first one is my workflow which is the same one as we saw in the example repository. So the question is how then do we run this 
WDL script using Cromwell. So the syntax is, um, we're using sudo just because of permissions in the directory, but java jar Cromwell 50 jar run my workflow. Now Cromwell is pretty verbose, and so um, I'm just going to show you the highlights of the output when Cromwell runs. Again, I will remind you we're in run mode, so we're running a single workflow here, and we're running it on this machine. So you can see that I have the output of hello world and the workflow finished with success. Here, I'll show you where that is right here, status succeeded, and there's the output, and then it shut down. When you are testing, you can actually set this up as a dev machine, um, and this is something that I uh, typically will use, and then when you're done, you can simply stop the machine, and it's a, a tip, really, because then you don't have to install anything on your local machine, and as long as you use a small size machine, it really doesn't cost anything. Uh, and so I just like to use this rather than a local machine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you are running your actual analysis, you typically will use uh, server mode. So you can set that up um, in a number of different locations. Uh, most typically, it will be set up in the public cloud. Now, you can set it up on um, an HPC cluster or a number of different environments, but in this course, I'll be demonstrating on the public cloud. There are a number of providers that are supported. Now what you're gonna be doing in server mode is Cromwell will be using a VM or multiple VMs as the job scheduler, and they will send requests for compute resources to a service on one of the cloud providers, depending on which one you select. For Google Cloud, that would be Life Sciences API. For Amazon, that would be AWS Batch. For Azure, that would be Azure Batch. The idea here is rather than using a single VM, you're using uh, groups of VM resources that spin up and spin down dynamically. So it's really effective use of the cloud. Now you can just access the uh, cloud clustering capabilities natively, and uh, that is certainly a very valid execution mode. However, in addition to that, and of course, as I said, you could run on HPC, there are a number of higher level services, and the one I'm gonna focus on in this course is um, created by the Broad Institute. It's called Terra.bio, and it's a managed Cromwell server environment which runs on GCP and uses life sciences. So let's now take a look at what running Hello World on Terra would look like. So Terra has a concept of workspaces, and I've pre-configured a workspace with a Whittle workflow um, that is basically the same hello world. Now there is a subtle difference here from the first one that we looked at. I don't know if you can spot it, but if you can see in lines 19 through 21, rather than running directly on a VM or any a group of VMs, we're now running on a Docker container. In order to run this, we click a blue button, and you can see that we have managed Cromwell, and we click launch, and this will launch one analysis, and this takes us to our job history, which is a um, aggregator and a viewer of the log information, both the Cromwell log information we saw when we SSH'd, as well as some of the Google Life Sciences uh, information. Um, now, because this takes a minute, what I did is I went ahead and I ran this already, and uh, you can see then once it succeeds, you get a success. You can then look at the output, and that will be in a Google bucket. And then to see the output, you just download it, and there's our Hello Input world. So uh, because the Terra system uh, runs with WDL, in addition to the information that I'll be creating in this course as I continue to develop it, um, I will link to existing WDL information. There's quite a lot of it in the Terra system. So here's the Terra documentation, and you can see they have a lot of WDL documentation. And this is just one of many different places where there's WDL information because there are many different systems out there. Terra is just one. DNA Nexus is another one, for example. And so um, what I'm aiming to do in my Learn Whittle course 
is to um, perform an aggregation service for all this WDL information that's out there. So I'm going to provide example scripts, patterns, best practices, links to uh, Widow scripts. So happy pipelining. <laughs>